Imagine you're all alone at night. There's trees around you and you can't see a thing. When suddenly... It's not the gentle hooting you'd expect, but that was the screech of the masked owl. When it swoops on its prey, though, it is utterly silent. Its feathers have evolved so they don't make a sound when flying through the night sky. This young male owl was nearly dead after colliding with a car, but a wildlife carer slowly rehabilitated him back to health until he could be released back into the wild. You could have a masked owl living in a tree in your own backyard and not even know it unless you knew how to read the trail of clues it left behind. Down here we've got a, a fairly freshly uh, regurgitated pellet from the masked owl. That's a uh, whitewash. Um, Faeces of the masked owl. Mick Todd has been studying Tasmanian masked owls for the last three years. The uh, major aim of the research is to look into the ecology of the Tasmanian masked owl, uh, particularly in relation to its conservation. Uh, it's one of the uh, more threatened of the hollow using birds in Tasmania. Uh, the only estimate of population size is about 600 breeding pairs from work in the mid 90s. And we know very little about it because it's a very secretive bird. It's very rare, it's widespread, but it's very thinly distributed. Uh, it's rarely seen, it's often very quiet, and it's nocturnal. His research aims to understand this shy and elusive bird. And he's looking for indications that there's a masked owl spending some nights in this tree so he can set up the tools of his research. This is the uh, automatic audio recording device that I've been trialling. Uh, works, the idea is it works as a data logger with microphones, turns itself on at dusk and at dawn or whatever times that I choose, uh, records for an hour and then turns itself off and it can do that for months at a time. We all need a home and masked owls are losing their homes. The hollows that form in trees at least 150 and up to 400 years old. Mick's study uses a variety of weird and wonderful techniques and devices to track and understand the habits of the secretive masked owl. One of the major methods that we've used for the research is using uh, call playback, which involves playing back the pre-recorded calls of masked owls from elsewhere. We do that through a megaphone, which carries the, makes the calls carry a long distance. And what this does is it brings in any owls that are within hearing distance of that call playback uh, especially if they're territorial birds, it brings them in and they defend their territory by calling back or uh, swooping, uh, but certainly making their presence known. Mick also collects and investigates the regurgitated pellets to see what they are eating and understand where they hunt. Uh, this is a, an older pellet. It's been here for uh, considerably longer than the other ones at this site. Uh, it's started to disintegrate and you can see a lot of the the bone components um, from the prey in the pellet and they look like they're the remains of uh, the eastern barred bandicoot which is to be expected because it's one of the the more um, common components of the uh, diet of the masked owl south of Hobart. These infrared cameras are activated when they sense movement and are used to film the owl's hunting habits. Mick's research has found that the habitat of masked owls is being lost because they need both old large trees to raise their young as well as open fields to hunt the eastern barred bandicoot and other small mammals that make up their diet. What might be a dead tree in a paddock to our eyes is actually a high-rise apartment block home to insects, birds and mammals. One of the particular requirements that masked owls have is that they require uh, very large uh, tree hollows for nesting in because they're quite a large bird. They're the largest of the world's barn owls uh, and when they have a couple of young in the nest that's a lot of owl in a small area inside a tree hollow uh, and so they need very big trees to produce holes that are big enough for them to nest in and uh, that requires mature old growth trees which are in short supply. Uh, they could be hundreds of years old by the time they're of a size that are producing, that are good for owls to nest in, they are uh, prone to falling over from old age, from wind or from fire. They can be burned out from fire. Uh, and they're also 
good for firewood, unfortunately. As these large trees die from old age or by humans removing them, hollows that are old and large enough for mast owls are becoming scarce, and there are fewer and fewer homes where they can raise their chicks. As climate change affects weather patterns and there is greater risk of fire to destroy old trees, further pressure is added to the already diminishing hollows the owls need to survive. Mick's research is important to understanding how these special birds can keep their homes. One of the best things about doing something like a PhD is you get to spend a lot of time out in the field and we can really contribute to the conservation of species and learn a lot about animals that are very poorly known. So it's, uh, it's always a real challenge, but it's an it's a, uh, exciting experience as well and very worthwhile. 